I gifted Lewis a one wheel recently, and once I saw him ride, I wanted in on the fun. So I scooped one up for myself. In this video, we'll show how we made a carbon fiber one wheel fender and share what we learned along the way. First, we needed to create the mold of the fender. We wiped down the original fender using an all-purpose cleaner and microfiber cloth. Next, we doubled back with denatured alcohol. We applied a few thin layers of PVA, allowing about 30 minutes to dry between each coat. This forms a protective barrier to prevent epoxy from sticking to the fender later. Setting the fender aside to dry, we covered one side of some foam core with seaming tape. Then we cut and hot glued the foam core around the edges of the fender to create a lip for the mold. We chose to make a single piece mold, mainly due to lack of experience. It would have been much better to make a two part mold split along the length of the fender for easier demolding later on. This will serve as the base for the first epoxy layer, so it's important to close up any gaps and holes. We used modeling clay and scraper tools to maneuver clay into the crevices and smooth out the transitions. We applied a few thin layers of PVA again, with time to dry in between each layer. Next, we mixed 2 to 1 epoxy resin with a splash of blue pigment for contrast, and gave the fender a glaze. Dye would have been better than pigment for uniform coverage because the pigment ended up pooling around the low spots. Alternatively, you could use gel coat instead of epoxy resin. When the epoxy became tacky to the touch, we laid shreds of matte fiberglass around the surface of the fender. Each layer of fiberglass was also soaked with a coat of epoxy. We found that dabbing our paintbrushes worked much better than stroking the epoxy on. We laid three layers of fiberglass and let it dry overnight. Once set, we trimmed the excess edges of the fiberglass with a scissor and Dremel tool. By the way, everything we used in this project is linked in the description below, so if you're going to try this project yourself, go ahead and check those out. Then we gave it a quick sanding and popped off the foam core. And after some hammering and prying, we separated the original fender from the mold. It was definitely satisfying to peel the PVA layer off. Now that the mold was ready, it was time to make a new fender. We started with a clean slate by wiping down the mold with denatured alcohol. Next, we lined the edges of the mold with masking tape so the tacky tape could have a good place to stick to later on. Then we brushed on a few thin layers of PVA, waiting 30 minutes between each coat as we did before. After mixing some more epoxy and hardener, we painted on a thick layer into the mold. As this dried, we lined the edge of the mold with tacky tape and cut the carbon fiber pieces to size. About this time, our epoxy became tacky to the touch, so we carefully laid down the first carbon fiber layer. We covered the first layer with adhesive spray before laying down the second and third layers of carbon fiber. Just above the carbon fiber went in a layer of peel ply and breather material. These created a barrier between the carbon and vacuum bagging material. This next part was a bit tricky. We placed a vacuum T in a plastic hose wrap and taped it along the short ends of the mold on top of the breather material on both sides. Then we placed a big sheet of vacuum bagging film over the mold, making sure to seal all the edges with tacky tape. We made large pleats to help crease the film and get into all the nooks. After that, we cut a hole for the vacuum tees to pop through and seal the edges with some more tacky tape. We used an empty Coke bottle inline of the pump and mold 
to catch excess resin as it sucked through the mold. We attached a vacuum hose to the tees. One end goes to the vacuum pump while the other end dips into a bucket full of epoxy. After we let the fender cure overnight, we were eager to take everything apart. This process took a while as epoxy had pulled to one side and cured as we lost time maneuvering the correct contraption for the vacuum fitting. In hindsight, we should have used 5 to 1 epoxy resin with a slower cure time to give us more time to fiddle around with the vacuum bagging process. We primarily use plastic pry bars to get the carbon copy out of the mold. Then we did some final shaping and sanding to get a snug fit to the one wheel and called it complete. This project was very challenging as it was our first time working with carbon fiber and resin infusion. So there are a lot of imperfections. A wise person once said, every defect gets respect. Since the fender is meant to sustain some bumps and scrapes, we're going to embrace the defects on this one and perfect the process on our next fender. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, please hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more projects like this, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.